Hey, what's going on, guys? Today I'm going to take a look at 10 small mods you might have missed. Grab the Damn Mag by Monkatras is a mod we've all been waiting for. Now we finally have a fix for the clipping issues on standalone weapon mods. You'll break the submachine gun's animation in the process, but the trade off is definitely worth it. Bethesda showed off an AK 47 in the newest Nuka World trailer, so that might fix the issue altogether, but until then, this definitely gets the job done. Now that your reload animations are fixed, why not break something else instead? Weapon Jams brings back the chance your weapons jam in combat. There are a few weapons that are immune to jamming, like revolvers and double barrel shotguns, but everything else seems to be fair game, including laser weapons. When your weapon jams, your ammo counter will go to zero, so to unjam it, just keep firing or hit the melee key. This will jerk the weapon around a bit, causing it to unjam and allowing you to put in a fresh clip. The chances you have a jam all depend on the receiver type you're using, along with your luck skill and how many perks you have in Gun Nut Science. I was a little confused on how a laser weapon can jam, but the mod author explained it on the mod page. He either knows what he's talking about, or he completely made it up off the top of his head. Either way, I'm just gonna go with it, because it sounds like a pretty legit explanation to me. One of the best shooters that come out recently, besides Doom in my opinion, was the new Wolfenstein. So if you're a fan of that game too, you should definitely check out the mod Panzer Hound. You can pick up this new companion over at the Robotics Disposal Ground, and you get two versions to choose from. There's a Panzerhound Mini, which is about the same size as Dogmeat, or you can grab the Panzerhound Maxi, which is as tall as a player. I do recommend you grab the Mini version though, because the Maxi version tends to be a pain, especially in interior locations. Take Shelter is a simple mod that I've been waiting for someone to make. This mod makes the Pulowski Shelters no longer useless by letting you use them as save points. All you have to do is walk up to them, then close the door, and the game will automatically save for you. If you're someone like me who likes to play on survival, this is definitely a must-have mod in my opinion. Hopefully someone will come along and make them useful during Radiation Storms too. Scrapatron 2000 is a handy mod that you should have at every one of your settlements. You'll find this new machine in the crafting category, and once you place it down, you'll see four buttons at all the different things. The first button is the Input All Junk button. This button will take all the scrap old junk out of your inventory and place it into the machine. If you're worried you might lose something useful by accident, the second button can be used to sort through your junk to only take out the common items instead. For example, it saved my baseball, for I can make a grenade out of it instead. Once everything you want to scrap is inside, just hit the third button, which will break down the items into the crafting materials and deposit them into the lower compartment. Once they're all broken down, all you have to do now is hit the fourth button, which will place them all into the settlement workshop for you to use anywhere. In my last mini mod video, I cover the mod Orphans of the Commonwealth, which has 20 new child settlers. Now with the mod School Desk by Frog Princess, you can build a school to keep them occupied. This mod adds 5 new desks, which come in red, blue, white, yellow, and green, along with 2 new desks for teachers. They function just like workstations, so all you have to do is assign a teacher to the desk, then assign each kid to one too, and if you're lucky, they all might sit still. Solar Panels adds 2 new solar panels to the workshop, so you don't have to listen to those annoying generators. The first new solar panel provides 3 power and can be mounted to almost any wall. You won't be running anything major off it, but it's enough power to light up the lights in whatever building you place it on. The second new solar panel is the solar panel rack, which provides 5 power. This one's really useful for powering up turrets that are placed in odd spots. You can either place them on the ground or on top of buildings, and if you need a little more juice, all you have to do is daisy chain them together. The next mod isn't exactly realistic. But as soon as I saw it, I knew I needed to have it. Hubrick's Comic Restoration brings a store back to its former glory. There's new custom textures for all the displays, and every magazine from the game is on the shelf for you to pick up. But I have to warn you if you haven't made it to Hubrick's Comics yet, just be careful walking through the door. The former employees are still there, and nothing static, so just one misplaced grenade can cause the whole store to be destroyed in just a few seconds. The mod author is working on a static version though, so hopefully that won't be much of a problem in the future. What I'd like to see is a version that gives me an empty store. That way I can collect all the magazines myself and have a nice place to display them. There's a few mods for Skyrim that add museums if you can put all the things you collect on display, and this just seems like the perfect place to do something like that. Public Occurrence is expanded. It's a nice immersive mod that adds 10 new newspaper articles covering the adventures of the sole survivor. When you complete a major quest, just head over and talk to Nat. She'll then hand you a paper that summarizes the quest, and they all change depending on the outcome. Altogether, there's over 5,000 words in total, and the author plans on expanding the articles to cover some side quests too. It is best to use this mod in a new game though, just so you get all the articles one by one, but if you're already deep into a playthrough like me, she'll just hand you them all one after another. I really like mods like this, because it's nice to see that people are actually acknowledging my presence in the wasteland. 
The last mod I have for you is called Bountiful Boards. I felt kind of dumb when I saw this mod, because I didn't even realize it existed. But after reading the comments on the mod page, it made me realize I wasn't the only one. If you didn't know there was bounty boards either, there's actually two of them in Diamond City. The main board is located on the wall, right to the left of this water shop, and the secondary board is in the hallway when you walk in the dugout in. How I managed to walk by these boards so many times and never see them is just beyond me. Now don't get too excited though, because there's only two bounties in total, and once you complete them, they're all gone for good. But luckily this mod came along, and made them all repeatable, along with that and four new quests for you to try out too. Hopefully the mod author expands on this in the future, because this mod definitely has a lot of potential. One thing I'd love to see is these boards put in settlements. I've always loved the way quests were handled in The Witcher, and it'd be great to have that same feature in Fallout. Hope you enjoyed the video guys, let me know in the comments which mod's your favorite. Thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next showcase.